Okay, so let's switch gears to Acumatica. I'm joined by Brian Summer here, and if you wonder what's going on in the background, there's no one showering behind us. That's actually a fountain. We're, it's the Zen of Orlando conventions here. Mm. <laughs> um, so let's let's reboot here and talk for a few minutes about Acumatica, cloud ERP vendor. An interesting company with a unique set of attributes and challenges, in my view. We're about day and a half into their week, which is for customers this year for the first time, but it's also geared particularly towards partners because they Acumatica does a lot of go-to-market through their partners. So what, what, what are your reactions so far? Well, let's give the listeners the, uh, here's the nickel tour on kind of the history because I think it's kind of interesting in how it yeah. forms or shapes the dialogue. Here's a company that only sells uh, through resellers. It has no direct sales to customers, period, end of story. They do have some of their own sales support people that will help their partners on some of the bigger deals, but it's all direct. And that's very appealing to these folks. And that's something that a lot of the founders brought with them, many of which came from companies like Microsoft, Solomon, and the like along the way. Uh, when you and I first started covering this company, that was, what, three years ago? Yep. It was a much smaller entity back then. It's been going through quite a bit of growth. There's been a number of personnel changes, too. But by and large, some of the core things about it's the direct, excuse me, the um, ch channel marketing approach and everything else and the target market they go after. None of those have changed. What has changed, though, is the sheer number of partners, revenue growth, um, the breadth of the product line, and even some of the functionality of the product line have improved quite a bit and they've gotten some better clarity around just what is their story on things like tenants multi-tenancy and the like fastest growing cloud erp provider though the ceo was careful to acknowledge that netsuite is still the heavyweight in this arena they're not really targeting the same customers at any rate netsuite's trying to move up market acumatic has said many times we're really focused on this mid-market yeah. That's where we want to stay. Well, he calls it a mid-market. I'm not, I'm not one to pick a fight with a CEO, but he, they're really selling kind of between like a, a starter system like QuickBooks and maybe something higher up the right. food chain like an Intact or whatever. They're kind of right in that spot. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they stay there. They stay there and stay focused, and it's kind of hard for us to find a lot of things to pick at at a show like this because they've been consistent in what they've been doing and continue to keep building out um, – geographically and uh, the product breadth. There's some interesting aspects. I think uh, they they were one of the first, because they, they built their technology late 2000s, and they focused a lot on uh, HTML5, basically, you know, make our software accessible on any device. Right. You can deploy on-premise or cloud. I think some of that is still pretty appealing for folks, the customers I talk with that can be, especially the mobile access can be very appealing. But one of the big differentiators that's sticking out for customers in a positive way is the pricing. Yeah, Their pricing is, is based on essentially metered usage. I mean, it's it has to do with transaction volume. So in other words, you don't have to pay per seat. So, you know, your company's growing, you want, or you want to extend this to 20 or 30 other salespeople, you want customers to be able to access a portal, you know, you can just simply give them access, you know. Well, this, this, let's take some time on this point, because this is really critical, I think, in understanding them versus the competition. Many of the competitors that they go up against uh, on the cloud solutions sign these like two, three, four year, mostly around two or three year kind of contracts. And you work your butt off trying to negotiate that deal and you get down to that kind of pricing and then all of a sudden the contract will then revert when you renew in that year three or year four to this um, uh, to then market kind of pricing. And the price increase can be ridiculously expensive unless you are very careful to negotiate something in advance. And having been in those kind of negotiations, I can tell you the vendors out there are very loathe to uh, walk, let some of that uh, future money kind of walk away. Right. So the fact that these guys kind of hold to their pricing is very helpful. The other thing, the point you made about the, uh, it's not by user, that's key too, because I was just doing a deal with a client and they have a whole bunch of people at their repair yards that uh, only go into the system to requisition uh, parts. That's it. Right. That's all they do when they need new paint or new whatever hoses or belts, whatever that they just that's all they enter in. And yet, because they're entering in a transaction, well, they have to then have a full user license to the system, which is about 
11 times more expensive than a report only kind of access. So again, unless you're just great at negotiating and can pound out and make the vendor come up with some new kind of license for that kind of lighter user, you get killed. And, uh, yeah. li and likewise, with some, some companies are just pigs when it comes to uh, and like how many invoice line items they run through. And if you're, you pick the wrong vendor who prices by like transaction volumes, right. you can get hurt on that too. Yeah, the other interesting thing is they've been pretty aggressive with their platform play, which they call XRP, but basically trying to encourage uh, ISVs and also customers to be able to easily build out on the platform without having to over-customize the software. And I think some of that's working pretty well for them. I mean, uh, in May at the analyst event that they did last May, they made pretty clear that they feel they have some work to do fleshing out certain verticals with functionality and that that's ongoing. That's going to be big for them, I think, is fleshing out some of the vertical functionality, either through themselves or more partners. Yeah, they're going to have to, um, they're never going to quit probably having to make investments and in rounding out functionality on the given verticals. Um, you know, there is no such thing as just manufacturing. There's a million kind of exactly. flavors of manufacturing. And uh, that'll be a journey that they'll be on a long, long, long time. Uh, we know they made an announcement they're acquiring intellectual property of one company here to extend out some, uh, some aspects of their manufacturing module alone. Uh, that said, the, um, the platform angle is really kind of interesting. They're going to use several components that are common to uh, the Microsoft kind of stack out there in the world uh, right. in the cloud area and .NET. But there are other aspects that are clearly, you know, uh, going a more open source or Linux kind of view. And uh, they're, and that's not unexpected. You know, when uh, cloud companies really start building and ramping up, they're looking for some of the horsepower kind of components to probably go open source on that, save them money, and hopefully pass those savings on to customers. Right. Yeah, I, it'll be interesting to watch. I mean, I, obviously they have a, a name recognition thing they're working on in the market. Um, the other thing that I think they're going to have some challenges in is they are trying to bring on bigger partners that are more specialized in certain industries. But the one thing I got from customers, I, I did dig for some dirt, you know, tried to get mm -hmm. some criticism. Some customers, I think, were struggling with their partner relationship because basically with Acumatica, you're more dependent on your partner than a lot of relationships with vendors because, you know, a lot of times, like, the vendor is part of the deal. But in this case, a lot of times the partner is really your key point of contact. So you need the right partner. And so I'm looking forward to talking with the, uh, the executives here a little bit more about their plans for sort of quality control and review of partners. I don't know a lot about that. So I'd like to learn more about that because it seems to me that they got to do a really good job of making sure that customers don't get find themselves caught up in the wrong partner relationship. But, you know, I think that's a solvable problem. I would agree. The uh, the choice of partners, uh, whether it's for an implementation partner or it's a lifelong partner you're going to yeah. have in your personal life is something one needs to approach with some care. Uh, you don't, you know, this is an interesting kind of world, particularly in the um, smaller business kind of solutions or the small SMB market where... Um, it does matter an awful lot. You're, you're not buying a uh, you're not buying a big brand name for an implementer. You're buying really the team that's actually going to work with it and the continuity you're going to be able to keep with that particular provider over the years. Uh, so yeah, quality and all that kind of stuff is clearly there. It's clearly got to be a focus point. And I think the uh, I think the days when channel partners could just look upon a customer as like a, an annuity and almost treat them with disdain, that won't work anymore. Yeah. And I think also some of Acumatica's customers aren't quite as savvy maybe as some of the Fortune 100 CIO types in terms of picking vendors and stuff. Some of them are new to that process, and so they're going to need education and resources on how to do that. And so, you know, it's all part of growing pains, I think. But overall, I think it's been an interesting show. Now you have to go do some more, uh, what do you call it, hand-waving with executives, uh, whatever it is you do in your meetings there. So we got to get this thing wrapped up. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I'll go wave. Uh, there'll be some <laughs> thrashing of body parts, yeah. Uh, we'll do some of that, yeah. All right. Um, well, I hope that goes well, and we'll check back next time. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks.